Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Nixon, and I am uh, going to talk to you this afternoon about school records on Find My Past. So um, welcome to this webinar and uh, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas break uh, and are now looking forward to this year as we go into 2021 with a degree of trepidation, it has to be said, doesn't it, with the lockdown in England anyway and, and elsewhere. But anyway, let's, um, let's hope for the best. And uh, this afternoon, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, uh, probably I don't know, 15 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes uh, talking to you about school records, um, just to really emphasize the importance of the records um, on Find My Past and what, what you can actually find in them. Um, I think they're an un underused resource and I'd like to encourage you to look at them and, and explore them. So so that's what this is all about. Uh, normally, of course, it would be back to school, which is why we're talking about school records now. But of course, it's um, back at home for most people in, in England anyway. So but anyway, let's let's crack on with these records. So uh, we keep them in the education and work category on Find My Past. Uh, so this is the category here. So you get to that from the home screen. You can search the different categories. And when you open the education and work category, that, this is what you see. Uh, you've got here um, the location at the top, uh, the subcategory and the record set, and it's the record set uh, which we're going to look at now. So that's that's there with a pink, large pink arrow. Um, if you click on the browse record set where it says browse, you come to another screen which will magically appear here. Um, it's all ordered alphabetically by the name of the record collection. And the one we want to look at is the National School Admission Registers and Logbooks, 1870 to 1914, which is the screen on the right, which I've already checked there. So once you check on that, and uh, so we've we've got to this by clicking on the, um, let me just get back a screen here. We got to that by clicking on the browse record set text there, but you could equally start typing in text into that box as well. Um, I, I clicked on the browse record set because it illustrates my point to show you the different collections within this overall category. So anyway, uh, you select on that National School Admission Registers um, and then click on that. And once you do so, um, there, there you see it highlighted. That populates in this uh, in this search. Um, screen here so that you can see that lozenge has appeared underneath there and you can see that uh, so so what we, what this is telling us is that we're now just looking at this particular record set um, within the education and work category and we can see also that there are 9,246,566 records within this collection it's a significant collection it was it was a contract we have with um, the archives and records association and the national archives and it really brings together record sets from across the UK um, and uh, from, from hundreds of archives and schools, uh, separate archives and schools, and we've pulled them all together in, into a national collection. Um, starts in 1870 and goes up until 1914. Um, the 1914 date is important because uh, obviously it's the start of the First World War and a lot of the people who appear, a lot of the boys anyway, who appear in these record uh, in these records, uh, did not survive the First World War. So it's important from that respect. It's, a, it's, it's it, in some senses, it's a, a record of a lost generation. So, um, so there, there we have the results. Let's have a look at what they look like. So they, they fall into uh, three categories, the records on in this particular collection. So you've got logbooks, uh, which is the one we'll look at first of all. And you can see uh, on the left, I've just pulled these screenshots together as a result of looking at um, records on Find My Past. I've pulled together the, the title page and then an index and then a typical entry, which we'll look at in a little more detail. Um, so you can see there it's, uh, it's a standard form diary or logbook for this particular school um, with the years covered uh, from 1894 to 1901. And then you have the entries starting. And in this, this case, it starts 1897. So on this um, extract here for 1897 for the logbook, you can see there uh, for the January the 15th, 1897, it's, it says uh, Harry Deacon has left the town. Martha Williams has gone to live with an aunt for some months. Ellen Kirk has gone away till the end of May. There are now 160 on the books. And then uh, the 18th, a few days later, um, attendance officer visited. Reginald Emerton is very ill. Edith Mead and Ernest Buck Buck Beckley um, have bad feet, so cannot walk to school. Now, um, as fascinating as this is, um, we have um, indexed all the names. So, so you, 
uh, I'm just reading through there, but we've indexed Harry Deacon and Martha Williams and Reginald Emerton. Um, all, all these names are indexed. So it means that if you go into the record collection or for that matter, if you were searching from the homepage for Reginald Emerton, uh, you would find him because he's been indexed and he will appear in this particular collection. So that's the logbooks. Um, they, it's, it's narrative. And the, the example I gave you there was um, attendance uh, sort of on a day-to-day -day basis and, and what was happening in the school on a day-to-day -day basis. You also get um, information about sports days and, and uh, activities within the school. So it's, it's interesting. It's narrative. It's so it, it puts it into, puts the records into context. The uh, admission registers themselves are far more, um, matter of fact they are they're, they're informative they give you a lot of information so you get the the name of the children you get the parents you get the the dates of birth you get the dates of admission uh, and other information as well and we're going to look at um, a particular record here for for a chap called Vernon Swatsman who I use quite a lot in talks and and as a, an example because he's got a great name um, I, I've never I don't suppose uh, that chant was ever heard on the terraces. One Vernon Swatman. There's only one Vernon Swatman. But I sort of uh, kind of wish it wish it was because I think there only is one Vernon Swatman. Um, it's a, it's a fantastic name, and and he's a good example of um, having to come to find my past to to find out about him. Because um, if you look at other sites, and of course, why would you want to look at other sites? But anyway, if you if you did feel compelled to look at other sites, uh, you would not find very much for Vernon Swatman. But but on Find My Past, there's a lot. So you've got the school records. Uh, which are exclusive to Find My Past. And then you've got other records as well. You've got military records. You've got um, parish records as well, all for this particular man. So um, let me have a look uh, to see what we have for Vernon Swatsman in the school admission registers. And it's a very rich uh, and full transcription. So you have there, um, running from the top, his first name, his last name, his year of birth, and then the date of birth. And that's that's important because you've got the full date of birth. It's not just a, an approximation. It's the actual date of birth and the event year and then the details of the school. And I've highlighted some inf some of the information here. So so the important parts, uh, as I say, the birth date, uh, the the town, um, Wolverhampton, where, where the school was located. It's St. Mark's Church of England School for Infants. And then you've got um, the county, uh, Staffordshire, as I say, he's, uh, we have baptism records for him as well as a result of our contract with uh, the Staffordshire uh, authorities. And then you have the archive reference as well. And, and in this case, um, uh, the archive is the Wolverhampton City Archives. And then on the right hand side, uh, you've got all the other or some of the other information for this particular man. So you, if you clicked on those links, you would find him in census records for Staffordshire, uh, you find him in 1939 register, baptism I've mentioned already, civil births, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot for, for Vernon Swatsman. Um, and if you, uh, this is what the record actually looks like. So you've got the um, admission number on, on the left-hand column, and then you've got the date of admission um, to this particular school, the 11th of March, 1901. And then you've got, uh, his name and his brother's name as well, Horace Swatsman. So you've got the two boys there, the two Swatsman brothers, um, and then you've got their father. I, I've condensed these, this double page into a single screen here, but Robert uh, Swatsman would, would appear to the right of the other uh, information on the top there. Um, and you've got the date of birth, um, as I say, for the children as well. So the 14th of April, 1896 for uh, Horace and the 19th of December, 1897 for Vernon. So, so good information. Um, that's the the page. So if I was if I was looking for Vernon Swatsman, I'd come to that particular page if I clicked on the image. But as good as that information is for me personally, I want to see the actual book and see what the book looked like as well. And you can get to that by clicking on this left hand arrow. So you can see that pink arrow on the uh, which I've put onto this screenshot, and the little arrow underneath that. If you clicked on that arrow, that takes you back a page as you can see here. So that's that's just gone back a page. So now the pink arrow is pointing below and you can see that having gone back a page, this is page 26 of 59 pages in total for this particular register. And if I then want to go right to the beginning of the register, I can simply um, put my cursor where it says 26 and type in one and that will take me to the first image in this particular collection. 
you can see that's what I've done. I've typed I've typed in one. So I'm now on page one of 59. So that's the first, this is the first image for these particular registers. And you can see it says their admission uh, 1899 to uh, 1908. So that's the first page for that particular register. And then going inside into the next page, you can see there at the bottom on the counter, this, this, is, this is image two of 59. You've got the, um, uh, the a series that the addition it's the Hoban series of registers um, what it is the admission progress and withdrawal of children and then you've got the the details of the actual school so so the schools um, were given these registers the, the these these weren't generated by by the schools they, they obtained the registers um, and then they put in the name of the school and the date of issue so you've got St Mark's infant school and, and the date there and then the the name of the correspondent um, as well which has been put in on the, on that page and then uh, going through if you I mean you can browse through there's a there's I mean, I've, I'm accessing this having looked for Vernon Swatman and, th and then gone back to, to page one but you can browse through these uh, registers as well there's a browse function if you if you were to go to the all record search on find my past and type in uh, school admission you'll see a result coming up for browse browse the collection and so you can you can browse through it which is just as, as if you were flicking through the pages so you, you've you've then got all these uh, names of the children in entered in alphabetical order, and if you wanted to, uh, you know, if you had the book in front of you, you could say, okay, well, I can see that person, um, Lillian uh, Attleborough or whatever her name is, is on page eleven, and then go to page eleven and find it. But and this is the digital version of that. Um, so the so the admission registers uh, which we just looked at there that's by far the uh, largest and, and the most important um, collection of school books that we have. But you, we also have some withdrawal registers uh, from Lancashire as as well that, that which were obtained under a separate uh, agreement licensing agreement. Um, it's the smallest element of the collection. There's uh, forty eight and a half thousand names, mostly from Liverpool schools. Um, they generally don't give next of kin details and. And some registers don't give date of birth either, but but nevertheless, um, th albeit it's a small collection, it's still uh, still worth um, making a note of because um, if, if it was your ancestor, you definitely want to have that uh, information um, to, to hand. Uh, excuse me a minute, I have my son here competing with with some music in the background. Torren, would you mind turning that down a little, please? Thank you. Uh, right. Um, the lost generation. I mentioned this before. Um, we have um, soldiers, uh, men who would go on to become soldiers, who appear in these registers. And so you have Wilfred Owen here, uh, Ed, Edward, uh, Wilfred Edward Salter Owen, who appears in the school register for this particular school, uh, the, well, the Birkenhead Institute, uh, in 1893. Uh, he was born and, and the event year was 1900. And you can see there you've got his... Uh, uh, his address you've got his uh, date of birth written down and, uh, and and the fact that it's a prep school the photo was obtained elsewhere the photo there are no photos of the individuals in this um in this collection and here's another man um private frank abernethy um uh, you get again got his uh, name you've got his parents name and you've got uh, his home address so uh, and in this, in this case as well the whoever's entered the the date of birth and the date of admission has um, not looked at the the headings and has put the year into the date column. Um, and I think the it's probably year, month, and day. So so Frank Abernethy would have been born on the eleventh of February, eighteen ninety five. Um, but for Frank Abernethy, I mean, he will appear in census returns, um, but he won't appear in the nineteen twenty one census, of course, uh, which. Uh, we'll be publishing next year but he uh, and you know there may not be um parish records for him as well which which easily give a, a date of birth he won't have appear in the 1939 register of course which does give dates of birth so having this uh, actual date of birth is key really um and it, it's why the collection is is so important and particularly so when you look at the, the counties that are represented within the collection so so here are the, here are the counties. Um, I've highlighted, um, I, I've made some bold. Um, the, these are counties, the, the, the bold blue are the counties where there is very little information online per se. Um, so, so Suffolk, Northumberland, uh, Herefordshire, Cumberland, 
Buckinghamshire, none of these counties uh, have contracted with third parties to publish parish records online. Um, so all of these counties uh, are underrepresented on all of the genealogy websites. Um, and so having um, date of, dates of birth for people in these counties uh, it becomes very important. Uh, and similarly, um, Bedfordshire, Isle of Wight, Middlesex, Derbyshire, Durham, Worcestershire, these are counties underrepresented on Find My Past. So you will find, again, uh, albeit we don't have um, Worcestershire parish records, you will find dates of birth for people uh, born in, in Worcestershire on, in this school registers collection. So, that, so that's why it's so important. Um, and, uh, and as I say, it's it's under underrepresented currently on on Find My Past, but there are nine million records there, um, and it's well worth looking at. So so do so do check it out. Um, I hope that uh, what I've told you will be helpful, uh, or at least provide some food for thought. Um, uh, as I said, this is a, is a fairly brief introduction um, to to records um, for the beginning of 2021, but I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, this is the last slide, so. Um, let me close there, and if there are any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Can't see any. Ellie, you might need if you're there, you might need to assist me on this one. Okay. Um gosh, there's quite a few there. Where do we start? Let me go to the beginning here. Lots of highs. Hello to everybody there. Who's all, all the all the greetings there from people? Thank you. Yeah, I'm just. Uh... Okay, it's mostly, um, I might have to come back and look at these and then answer them, um, or maybe on Facebook. Um, Middlesex, yeah, we have Mary Jones, uh, Middlesex is in bold, is that also underrepresented? Well, um, in the sense that we, uh, we we do have quite a few Middlesex records, but it, but we don't have a, um, a license with um, LMA, for instance. Um, so, so in that sense, it's underrepresented, but... Um, as you say, there, as uh, Linda Salter, hopefully um, North Hants, that's a discovery for you. So good. Let's hope you find something there. Um, Scottish school records. Does it have Scottish school records? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's England and Wales. Um, why is Bedfordshire underrepresented? It just is underrepresented. We don't ha we don't have an, um, an agreement with the with the county archive, um, but we do have the records in the schools. Uh, so that, this is why the schools records are so important. Okay, um, how can I tell if my ancestor married? Okay, that's a different question, not relevant to this particular presentation on schools, I'm afraid. Uh, so I can't answer that one. Will later school records be added at some point? That's a good point, uh, Denise McKnight. Thank you for asking that. Um, yes, all being well, they will. I, I am in touch with... Um, Archives and Records Association, uh, it would involve uh, further scanning. And the reason it ended at 2014 was um, that we set it at, at 100 years. And we, I think we published in 2014. So, so it was 1870 to 1914. Um, and uh, we're now to 2020. So there's the, there's the potential to add more records. Um, Somerset included. Um, I don't know that it was in my list, actually. Um, so no, and that's I, I don't believe it is included. Um, great. Okay. All right. I'm going to. <laughs> 
Yes, 2021 fashion trend in the making. You spotted the uh, Find My Past um, sweatshirt, did you? Um, well done. Yes, Christmas present that was. I had to fight my daughter and my wife for this. They've, they've both been after it. Anyway, that's beside the point. The years covered again, uh, Caroline J. Benham, were 1870 to um, 1914. All right, let's end it there. Thank you very much for tuning in and, and again i wish you all a very happy new year um, and please um please do tune in to see these regular broadcasts that find my past uh, is putting out bye for now <laughs>